64 here with a new video on the channel and this time I'm actually going to be reacting to the comments of one of my videos. So as you guys may know my Metopia job tier list has the highest amount of views over any single other video I have on my channel. So it got a lot of traction and also got a lot of comments. Now I wanted to wait and see how this video was going to impact my channel and impacted me a lot honestly because um, this was the first series I've ever done and I got into some very controversial territory as you guys can see over here so um, today we're gonna take our sweet time reading all these comments and see what people have to do, have to say and if you guys want to be a part of these types of videos definitely comment down below on some of the other videos I do I won't necessarily be um, doing it for this one but I'm, but the videos need to like be around for quite some time like this is a video I made about like a little bit l less l a little bit less than like a year ago so um yeah so we're gonna take our sweet time reading all of these comments and trust me when I say that they are long they are long Alright, so first one is, the princess has a lot of good attacks later on though, the imp is really good towards late game, so, I, I have, I'll say, I am honestly very intrigued about that, because I just feel like there are other classes that, um, can do a lot of these better, and I haven't necessarily used a lot of these classes to the full potential, since as I explained in my video, these, based off of what I've seen and how I've played the game, these are the cl these are the classes that the best classes are the ones that benefited me the most on the team, and these are the ones that benefited me the least, or I didn't even like play them at all, in like the pop stars case. So personally, I moved the chef and thief down a tier, the princess up two tiers. So the chef and thief would go down there, and then the princess going up to great. I mean, I haven't seen the whole princess. Um, kit yet oh no just down one tier so good only if the player used it like i could see that but i'm not sure about moving the princess up two tiers i'm on my second playthrough right now but on my first i was a warrior and i was cool personality the entire time i think cool is better because you can protect your teammates and when you're getting attacked you can dodge and then deal extra damage that is actually really good like i mean cool i feel like has like no drawbacks in this game whatsoever so I definitely have, um, that is definitely something I may look into. I'll say, and of course, I also replied to that. Yeah, kind protects your teammates. Not cool. I mean, to say the proud protector, yeah. Alright, so, um, okay, this one isn't as bad, okay. So, energetic helps with giving up the plays more turns. What? No, it doesn't. Yeah, I think I may have uh, messed it up. I think energetic just restores MP. The only thing energetic does is the chance to survive on a deadly blow with one HP. Uh, yeah, cheer others on, which gives them MP. Yeah, I thought it was giving them another turn, but that's basically, but that's practically an energetic pop star. And rather weak 3% chance of slightly dealing more damage from auto attacks while damaging yourself. Also, it seems you're kind of uninformed when it comes to stats. For example, the Imp is the second tank, the second tankiest magic class after the Vampire. Or how the Elf's magic damage is actually pretty low. It makes Elf good as the barrier. It can give it to others. It has naturally higher physical attack. Interesting. So, Imp is actually very tanky. Though, I mean, when I used him, it definitely wasn't. And, um, Vampire, what did I put him? Yeah, I put Vampire in Great. I feel like that's, I still feel like that's where it belongs. Though I will say that the magic is probably good. And Elf's magic damage is actually pretty low, but what makes Elf good is the barrier. It could give it to others. I mean, yeah, but that takes like five whole turns of setup. In a game where there's... Terror Imps, or whatever they were called. So, I'm not sure about that exactly. The Vampire Job is way too overpowered. I have some bad stuff, but the Vampire Job is definitely your favorite. 
Okay, so people are, so there's a lot going around saying that Vampire is overpowered. I mean, it is an endgame class, so it should be. But I mean, why would you take the time to level up an entirely new class if you already have units that are like level 30 already? Or like, even more so in my case, max level. Like, I stopped trying to level up a Vampire and an Elf because that the team I had put together was just so good. I didn't see any, I honestly didn't need, um... Honestly, didn't need those other classes. Okay. I gave my scientist the airheaded trait. Did not disappoint. I don't remember exactly what airheaded does. I mean, it is good distraction. And I think it may do something else, but I don't remember exactly. I feel like he didn't put activation chances into account when making the list. The skill can be good, but if it has a low activation chance, it's basically useless for the AI. That may be true, but I mean... Again, in my playthrough, the right stuff seemed to happen most of the time, and this and if the, it didn't happen that much, I just thought it didn't exist and worked accordingly. I mean, I replied to a couple of these as well. Yeah, that is usually because I've recently had any times the AI has used an ability at least once, and they're often not put into positions to use them. That's why I also didn't take those into account. See, exa that's exactly what I said. See, eight months ago, me is the same as today. I'll say I don't want to reply to that. Alright, Elf and Cat are the two jobs that help me the most. I mean, Cat is really good. Cat is amazing. And um, I haven't seen enough of Elf. Okay. Okay, so this one is... Alright, so this one is probably really good. But Imp isn't squishy at all. It has good HP, magic, and defense. All stats that have to do with bulk, taking out magic... Makes sense that it is also used for attack, so its stats are also 100% bulk. Okay, so it's like a magic tank class. Imp has either better HP or defensive stat, better HP or defensive stats than the following. So, oh, okay. So it has better HP and defense than mage, cleric, thief, but it's only a five point difference for defense. Popstar's defense, chef is HP, cat is both, scientist is both, tank is though to be fair. Hmm. Notice that the only job not mentioned here is the warrior, which has the second best HP and the fourth de best defense. Speaking of placements, how is imp places in the three stats I mentioned? These are not the 100% accurate, but at least close. So fifth best HP, sixth best defense, and fourth best magic. That's all for the top half, not to mention the magic category with mage and cleric have it above, of which I've already established, above those who have worse HP, defense stats, then imp by large margin, so imp has effectively two best magic attacks, only being, only being, wait, hold on. So imp is effectively the second best at ma taking magic attacks, only being beaten by the vampire. In fact, I would say that imp is the second or third bulkiest class in the game, Aim Vampire coming out of this, at the clear top between, but it's a bit of a toss up between Imp and Warrior, maybe Flower as well, but I'm thinking not yet. It, very interesting, interesting. What do some other people say? The thing about the Warrior is actually inaccurate. It has the third best HP, second being Popstar, first being first being Vampire. Okay, the Flower's only good stat is HP. Everything else is mediocre at best. Not from what I've seen. Okay. Well, I have a bad tip for, for relationship in Metopia. This solution is Switch exclusive, but both means you want to get a relationship in a room and they can get give them outing tickets until they have a good relationship. I'm pretty sure you can grind tickets by getting... Yeah. So that's... So I mentioned stuff about, like, the tank, like, ruining friendship, like, 90% of the time, which is why it's not really good for, like, AI. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, everybody. All right, I love how it starts off with, so I have a lot of issues with this list. So let's dissect this. So let's start with the tiers. Honestly, player and AI jobs should be two separate lists because there are many different issues with both. That, that can make a lot of sense, but I wanted it to be like a little bit more on the simplified side. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I agree that flower is awful. Its stats and healing are pathetic. Popstar is easily great tier for AI. It can end quarrels, give extra turns, revive, heal, and other stuff. 
It ha- and it's amazing on player because its horse whispering is ridiculous. It can heal all teammates and hype them up. That's really broken. Unless you have a healer and then they're hyped up and you can't do anything for a turn because you have to put them in the safe zone. <laughs> Princess is a good damage dealer and it has some good stuff. I mean, I I mean, scientists from what I saw was able to do just as much as the princess did, if not more. So it should be in good if the player uses it. Blindfold, blindfold, T ability, and escort are great moves. I agree with the tank and imp placements. Now this is where the list falls apart. Chef is an okay healer, but it can't revive. And flambe is its only good attack move. Um... Let's see, it can't revive, which is true, and flambe is its only good attack move. I mean, spicy dish and dinner aren't great. It should be an okay tier or maybe player tier. Um, I could see that. I could definitely see that. Because I suppose the cleric kind of does more. Because it does have aura, it does have righteous anger. Which is also the cleric's version of one-shotting, which is interesting. Cleric should be higher up on the on higher up on the great list. It's the best healer in the game. I mean, it's a class specific to it, so I can understand that. It has a hundred percent activation chances in most of its moves, and let's not forget Giga Panakia. Yeah, yeah, that saved me on um on my uh on my Tower of Dread run. Vampire is really good. Bat Tornado can do insane damage. The most damage in the game when maxed out. But maybe Cat or Mage is Tower of Flame could do a bit more. Review E and Enthrall are broken. Oh yeah, Enthrall like turns your teammate into a vampire and allows them to revive. Scorching Breath is very good. It has amazing stats. It should be up really high. Thief should be in okay. Its stats and activation chances are not good. I will say that that makes sense, and its strongest attack is not good. Cat has okay stats and can do insane damage, so it should be higher. That is uh, that is actually something I would probably work on. I could probably do that. Elf is easily the best job in the game. Okay. So this is where I'm curious, because like... Sure, it's an endgame class, it should be good. It's That's what endgame content is for. But are you really going to sit there and grind up all the way back up to level 40 with a different class and spend even more time getting even more gear to max it out just so that way you can breeze through the game? I mean, that may be in some cases that's how you play, but I mean, that's not how I played Metopia. I was like, if I have like I have a good enough team, I can just do it. The only po- The only problem left was execution. All right, but let's see here. Not as an AI... Oh, it's the best job, not as an AI, but as the player, it's overpowered. Interesting. So, you, so they want you to be the elf. Which is, like, even less likely, because... Like, if you're using a different class, you're obviously going to want to stay that class. Because it's your highest level 1, it's closest to the max level, like, 50. So, it's like... It's such a... It's, I, I don't think it's such a good trade-off, honestly. Alright, Hail of Arrows does good damage and hits all enemies. It also has an AoE heal and can restore MP. It has good stats. It doesn't lack anything, but Force Aegis is OP. It halved all the damage taken to you or your teammates. So that's the damage calculation on that. It just halves the damage. So does that mean when you get when you come across those Terra Fiends, instead of it doing it 999, it does 500? Because if so, then that is actually really good. But if it's still one-shots, then I don't see that great of a use for it. And besides, it's, you can't put it all on one turn. You have to spend, like, five turns not doing anything besides setting it up. Which, in that case, the enemy can just kill you anyways. Oh, sorry. So, yeah. <laughs> that's what, that's my b- little bit of Force Aegis. You can put Proud... Okay, hold on. You can put any... You can put it on all of your teammates, and it only costs 3 MP. That may be why it... I mean, if you're fast, then maybe it'll work out. I'm, 
repeat 3 MP. Warrior has okay stats and has good damage, but can't Vampire do more damage than the Warrior? But Warrior is supposed to be balanced, so you can't. So you're sacrificing a little bit of damage for defense. So it's a little bit more. Like, it's definitely a balanced class, so it's not just off damage. I'm taking defense into consideration as well. Alright, but spamming Proud Protector is really good. You know, I, I think I've actually, I think I did that at one point in my uh, Tower of Dread run. I don't remember exactly. Mage has the best magic attack stat. That is absolutely true. It has okay stats overall, but it's not one of the best. Cat and Vampire can do more damage. Her Tower of Flame and Giga Explosion do consistently good damage, but Vampire and Cat can actually do more in certain situations. And have way better stats and skills. Mage only has... Two non attack based skills. Sleep tight is okay, but it basically costs two turns. And bear can only be used on itself at the cost of 18, so it should be in great. That, to be honest, that makes sense. I mean, barrier, I don't even know what the damage reduction is on barrier. Okay, so scientist is okay? No. Hold on. Mask is good, but it has a rather low activation chance. That is true. Glitch is good single target, but other jobs can do way more damage. That's true. And both formulas are good, but as I said before, other jobs can do way more multi-target damage. Cure is good, but there are better healing moves. It is a very diverse job, but it doesn't excel on anything. So it's definitely not the best. I mean... So here's what I'll say about that. Since it is a good track jack-of-all-trades, not a master in anything, but it can do well... Like, it has such a good diversity that I think it makes the low activation chances worth it. Because that basically takes three roles and puts them into one. So you can have different teammates focusing on damage or other things. So it's like, since you have that... Since you have like that sort of jack of all trades, you can use your other teammates for other things instead of having a class devoted to it. Okay, but other than that, other jobs can do way more. Okay, so care is good, but there are better healing moves since the diverse job doesn't excel on anything. It's definitely not the best. It should be moved to down two tiers. So I put it from So that'd be putting it from the best to good only if the player uses it, which honestly is that's honestly good that's honestly like i don't i wouldn't necessarily mind but from what i saw with the scientist in my playthrough it worked out really well i have an energetic thief and it's kind of broken yeah that's really cool as a flower user i can confirm that i should not be real <laughs> yep personally my favorite class is pop star don't tell me why <laughs> okay all right imp is only good if the player uses it my five-year-old brain was carried most was carried most of the time by the AI imp. They had great damage and was really good on the team. I've never used it myself, so I don't know if performance is better with an actual person, but the AI is to be isn't to be underestimated. I mean that I mean that honestly kind of states what I said earlier about like AI activation chances is that sometimes they're not in the right position to use that skill. Like, the AI, the AI, like, I'm gonna say 75% of the time is actually kind of smart. So, it's definitely not to be underestimated, so... Saying that a skill has, like, a low activation chance or things that, that they don't do it, is that they are, they're not in the right position to do it. Whereas, like, you can make mistakes because you are... It's like there's an own player fault. Alrighty, let's see here. Oh boy. Okay. Personally, I don't think there is an objectively best class in the game. Alright, so we have a generally well-rounded person. I welcome that. Every class is strong in their own way, yet some are stronger than others. Here's my personal list. I'd love to have a debate if someone disagrees with me on it. So, the best vampire. Great is mage warrior cleric scientist good only if the player uses it cat elf tank pop star princess imp mediocre pop star versus flower the reason vampire is my pick for the best best job is 
magic attack defense, whatever physically attacked it half damage back. Revive at 1 HP, if used correctly, can still stall for many as many rounds as you need. That's interesting. Stalling would be kind of interesting. I'll say, because I think Kind Vampire would be absolutely nasty. Alright, their main attacks is Spread. Spread attacks are kind of debatable. They can do all unreliable small healing that does tip damage whenever you need to. Interesting. My favorite class is the Thief. Yeah, so I'm going to subscribe. Thank you. Alrighty, let's see here. Oh boy. Okay. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to go, guys. Because I'm planning on going through all of these comments. Alright. Let's see here. Chef solo healing is alright, but group healing is unreliable and there is no revival. So that's fair. The attack power isn't anything special unless you're willing to hurt friendship, and that's only if there's few targets. Hitting multiple up to four, it is up to four friends and is very weak when hitting many targets. It's okay at best. Imp Sweet Whispers is insanely good, especially with Horse Whispering. Good only if the player uses it might work. Maybe just great, even if lacking in raw offensive power if there's one or more enemy. Also, Charm is easy to control in regards to AI. They can, they use it on low MP characters. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. I thought it was just random and it would just like use charm on your healer and then you're just like <laughs> screwed for like a couple turns. So if you're a physical attacker and you can use horse whispering and they'll give you free hyper and you can use MP sprinkles on in or the safe spot. So that's actually interesting. I may take that into consideration eventually. Not even the stat buff from it, but just making me unable to be targeted by the imp to keep examples like healers safe. Tank is also great with cautions because they can wait until the end of the turn for a powered up attack when they're already usually going last. Okay. Except when there's a tank, because then the tank is going last. The elf definitely goes in the best. Sure, they can't revive, but they've got solid magic and physical damage. Okay, so I'm getting conflicting things. I'm hearing it has good physical... Actually, wait, no. I'll say, I'm, I keep hearing it says... I keep hearing people say that it's either good physical and magic damage, or like, just... Like, either the best or good. So, I can't really tell exactly, but these are probably their experiences with the game. So, that's what I was saying at the beginning of my tier list, is that this is off of my experience and how I saw the game. So hopefully some of these people actually went back and watched my Metopia playlist. And you guys can as well, so you guys can see where I'm coming from with these. So that's why I made the tier list, and that's why I'm reading these comments. It's because I want to see what other people thought, and there were a lot of these. <laughs> oh my goodness. I still get comments to this day on this. I don't need you going last, okay. Off is definitely the butt. Man, sorry, I read that. Except for the part in the Switch final boss, which removes the buff, such as you know, a cleric has a solid group healing, they are top tier. Yeah, I mean, having a helper as a cleric is, um, is, I think that's the best way you could possibly do it, because that means they don't take damage and they can just focus on healing. Yeah, the elf definitely goes in the best. Yeah, I already read that. Dancing Arrow has a 100% chance Dance chance? Interesting. It just doesn't work against strong enemies because it just doesn't work against strong enemies because of balancing. Interesting. <laughs> the what? Thief is super weak. Okay, so I don't remember the context for um 1020 over here, so let's see what that is. Okay, so I said it had the highest spread damage in the game. Alright, so let's go back to that. The what? Thief is super weak. They're a defensive class. You already rated Scientist. Scientist has so much more spread damage. Popstar has more spread damage with the out of tunes. Okay. So, I will say that... So, I'm talking about, like, strongest... AoE, may, AoE like, normal attack damage. Because Scientist... Because Scientist has to spend MP, and Popstar has to do MP and cause damage to your teammates. Like, I know it's only one damage, but it's still a downside. Alright, right, hold on. So, ultimate turn, single usage. Oh, okay. 
So I'm not sure exactly what they were talking about there. Ultimate turns, single usage. Princess is like the scientist, but in return for some damage, they can lower the defense of multiple enemies, which makes their damage way higher. But I mean, lowering defense just makes your damage dealers deal more damage. So it's not necessarily a case for the princess that much because anyone can deal more damage if, it, if the defense is lowered. They're also one of two classes whose horse, horse whispering gives the rest of a party the absolutely broken good mood status. That powers them up a lot in all of those stats. Along with automatically using basically the same move that lowers defense on multiple opponents. The main issue with Princess is their lack of group damage earlier on, but Royal Wave Destruction. Okay, so I seem to have been underestimating the Princess because I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. And I've seen more of the Scientist in action. Because I use the Scientist for like a, certain, oh, a decent portion of the game. Cleric is the best healer that's obvious i'll at you all i want <laughs> all right i'll at you all i want fiend flowey flowers held back by the ai being especially incompetent and not healing half the time look i get it cleric is so much better okay so as you guys can see in the list like we go back over here i literally said absolutely worst class don't at me for the flower and this person is making a case for the flower so <laughs> let's see what you gotta say Flowers held back by the AI especially being especially incompetent and not healing half the time. Look, I get it, Cleric's so much better. Cleric's also broken, but on their own, Flower has good group damage with Hurricane, has a revive on like a certain bad healing class he rated so high. So, you mean the chef. It also has reliable group healing and solo healing. But the main thing that gets the Flower up to only good the player uses it. Well, but the main thing that gets to... Oh, is the horse whispering. Remember how Princess was really good? Well, all, that recovered all my MP. Need the main... Th fine, I guess. But ultimately, it won't get you out of a jam. Flower re revives and recovers all HP in exchange for not recovering MP and not lowering the opponent's guard. So, what you're telling me is that you're going to use your horse whispering. You are going to revive your whole team. And you're going to die. Causing you to not be able to do anything because you are out of MP and you're basically dead and you'll have to have another healer revive you. Or get lucky with the um, snap out of it with the, with the warrior class. That's a terrible trade-off. Like, that's, like, that's, like, that's the worst trade deal in the history of trade deals. Possibly ever. The flower is way too selfish and way too squishy. Can you forgive the damage? Yes. But there are other classes that can do that. And to a much better degree. Like, let's be honest here for a second. Flower is garbage. As much as you may try to defend it, and it does have some benefits as many classes, but there are so many other classes that can do what the flower does better, and you're not going to play as the flower. Like, you're just not. You're going to use a damage dealing class. And if you're going to go, and if you want to use a damage dealing healer, then just use the cleric. <laughs> oh my goodness. I got nothing against these people. I truly, I don't. I love hearing other people's opinions. But when someone tries to defend the flower, and I think this is actually the only person who tries to defend the flower. -er, so please don't message them at all. Just leave them alone. Like, I'm not trying to make fun of them. I'm just, like, thinking of it from a realistic and strategic point of view here. I just don't see any use for the elf. For the, uh, not the elf, the flower at any time in the game. Because there are so many other classes that can do it, do what it does better and more of it. 
Like, oh my goodness. The cat does so- alright, so... Also, the flower has good magic defense. Well, so does the vampire. So does the, uh, the imp. <laughs> There's just so many things that the, the flower does that other classes just do better by a huge margin. I will say that horse whispering is really good, but are you really going to sacrifice... Like, your ability to contribute actually well to the team and take such a back seat. I mean, if you want to play that game, fine. Have extremely low HP and physical defense, but... I mean, that's your way to play, but... <laughs> oh, man. Having a flower is such a burden. <laughs> okay, moving on. Cat does so good, along with working with Horse Whispering Flower, they just do so much damage. There's no reason not to have one. They just make things a breeze by doing 1990, 1998 damage to every enemy in one turn. Yeah, Cat is insane. Alright, so 18 time. Okay, so 18 time. What in the world are the majority of people choosing? A boring old sword over a dress, a frying pan, and a stick? Popstar seems really common for people who choose the first part. Who wants to choose for the first part? Interesting. I f I, okay, so forgot chef. Okay, so what? Vampire behind thief. Are you also completely ignoring scorching breath? Breath is a multi-target move. Okay, so thief's a solid defensive class. Okay, vampire d makes people just not die. Will get up on their own, and also has great but strangely acting magic physical damage. Vampire is great, one of the best. Endgame class, and if you want to spend your time grinding to max level to face Tower of Dread, that works. Cool. Okay, so, Elf can, Elf can solo Dark Moon boss and... Can solo Dark Moon and Final Moon bosses. That's very interesting. Okay, so this is their own list. Okay, so he clearly says these classes are from my experience from both a computer in my team. From both me and a computer in the team besides Elf, just me. So this is with his experience or their experience. So S is Imp and Elf, interesting. A is Mage, Warrior, Princess, Vampire. B is Scientist, Pop Star, Chef. C is Flower, Cleric, and Thief. And F is Tank. So... I'm not sure if I, like, I would just move Flower and Tank. I feel like just Tank with its physical bulk is just good. It's just really good in a way. Because, like, sure, it's slow. And, I mean, as long as you're the one using it, you, you can kind of keep everyone else, like, friendly with you. And still do a lot of damage. Which is very interesting. I'll say, what else did some of these people reply? Oh, he didn't include cat. Uh, okay. Feline frenzy with laid back is overpowered. That is probably insane now that I think about it. Okay, I don't like laid back because they either save on MP or make friendships almost impossible. <laughs> uh, I have laid back chef. <laughs> <laughs> uh... The mage is pretty useless without any MP, well, so is every other class in the game. Yeah, most of the other classes are, and if you have a member who generates MP, it's not a major problem. Yeah, so, like, cat. <laughs> Shrimp, a fan favorite pop star on Failboat's Miitopia Season 2, am I a joke to you? I mean, I love watching Failboat, and that pop star did some work. Nice video, thank you so much. There are 14 jobs, not 10, you just have 6 from the start, and you get 3 more... Or in the post game. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so doesn't really matter though. <laughs> okay, hire like a video. Okay, so horse kind of OP though. Night warrior, what? Yeah, I, I switched between like night and warrior like a bunch of times. I didn't remember exactly what it was called. Chef is a beginning class too, by the way. That's true. It's cool, good for cat. I mean, let's see. Cool allows for dodging and weak spot attacks, so I think so. I don't remember the downside to it, though. Yeah, and it doesn't really have a downside. Weren't there some other comments that were like... 
Because I, I got, like, another one recently as well. I, like, let's check, like, this bell over here. Okay, so this was two hours ago. You guys can see over here. Okay, so this is a very short one, and this, and this is the last comment I have. You just put Elf a tier- Now, this is why I made the video. You just put Elf a tier lower just so you can look unique. Don't act like you actually think it isn't as good as Scientist and Wizard. Same can be said with the Vampire. Again, if you want to grind up to all the way to max level and spend all those extra hours getting the gold gear, be my guest. But when it comes down to it, the team that is the most well-balanced and the team that's the highest level in the highest relationship is going to get the job done. That's all I can say about the endgame classes. Well, that is pretty much every single comment. All 77 of them on this list. If I remember exactly because... Yes. That is all 77 comments. And now, I will say though that although that, that one comment was the main reason why I made this list, the second reason is that I plan on possibly rewriting history. I'm thinking about replaying Metopia with all of this in mind. And seeing how my tier list is at the end of that. Now, I don't know exactly when, but it will definitely be soon. So, I definitely want you guys to look forward to that. So, with that being said, everybody, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely make sure you guys leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And ring the notification bell so you do not miss another episode of Metopia when those eventually come back. And to prepare for it, why not check out the uh, playlist over here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just can't get over the zone trying to defend the flower. Absolutely not. But yeah, check out my Metopia tier, my Metopia tier list, the full video, giving more, more of my first explanations, and also the entire Metopia on Nintendo Switch playlist. It's very old, so I ask that you guys bear with me if the quality is bad. So. And there were a couple of hiccups of it, but it was probably the most fun series I've done so far. So again, I highly recommend you guys check that out. And thank you guys again so much for watching. I have been Odyssey64, and I'll see you guys next time.